Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. Um, tonight is uh, a clear night. It's the first clear night it's been for uh, what's well, coming on for about a month now. Um, so I'm making the most of that, and I've actually got a couple of scopes out uh, tonight just to yeah just get as much data as possible. Um, so in this video, what I'm going to be doing is imaging a number of different targets: um, the Orion Nebula, uh, Pleiades and uh, possibly uh, the Rosette Nebula as well. <laughs> I haven't actually decided yet. Um, so uh, keep watching and let's see what we find. So here are the two rigs I've got. Uh, you've got the uh, Skywatcher EQ uh, 6R Pro and on that rig I've got the Red Cat 51 and uh, doing all of the sort of guiding and, and slewing and all of that sort of stuff is the ASI Air Plus uh, strapped to the top. You can see just about on the top uh, there's a little bracket that I've managed to um, build with my uh, 3D printer. So you've got the guide scope on the top um, in front and then the ASI Air Plus behind and then the usual ton of cabling that I still need to tidy up a little bit. And over here, um, I've got my trusty ATED Pro um, with the ASI uh, 1600mm Pro and the filter wheels. And the plan is to um, to do some narrowband imaging, I think. Um, also got the electronic focus on there as well, which is it's been fantastic since I've had that. So yeah, two scopes tonight. Uh, it's pretty windy and they've got intermittent cloud uh, coming across every now and then. So it's not a great night for imaging, uh, but tomorrow night looks a lot more promising. So the plan is to get all these rigs set up in place and hopefully I can get a full night's imaging tomorrow night. So once the uh, wind had died down a bit, I decided uh, to actually sort of get into a hammock that I've got in the garden just to relax a bit because most of the time imaging I'm frantically rushing around sort of making sure everything's okay um, making sure guiding's going all right and all of those sorts of things and you kind of forget sometimes to actually just sit back and enjoy enjoy the night sky and enjoy the view um, it's not really visual astronomy given that um, yeah, most of the time I've got lights on and things like that for recordings, so therefore my night vision is completely uh, destroyed. Um, but you still can at least uh, get to enjoy the scene that I'll show here in the uh, in the time lapse for you. So I'm about halfway through the night now. Um, everything seems to be going okay. Uh, did have uh, a few issues briefly with the um, the ATED Pro on the EQ5 uh, Pro mount. Uh, for some reason, the declination guiding wasn't really working properly. But um, then slew to a different target um, and recalibrated guiding, and it seems to have sorted itself out. So uh, everything's looking good there. Um, I've had some uh, typical challenges of the evening of uh, navigating through some uh, trees so i've just been switching between um on one of the scopes switching between sort of the orion nebula and also pleiades and um with with the ATED pro i'm just uh, imaging ha um for the orion nebula at the moment uh, currently those are uh, 300 second subs with ha um and what i plan on doing later on is uh, doing some subs that are going to be a bit shorter, uh, just to try and bring out the uh, the detail in the core. Uh, I've been doing the same with the Red Cat as well, so that's also uh, targeted with um, or targeting the Orion Nebula. Uh, did some, I think, uh, 300 second subs. That's a one shot color camera that's on the back of there, 
and um, done so, or been doing some 30 second images there as well. So uh, second night tonight, um, it's definitely a lot uh, damper or humid. Uh, you might be able to see my breath. Um, so uh, yeah, dew heaters are, are working pretty hard tonight just to make sure that the uh, the front elements of the telescopes don't get uh, don't get fogged up. Um, however, annoyingly, I've got two telescopes set up, uh, one there and one behind me here, uh, but I've only got three uh, dew heaters. So that means that the guide scope on this rig here. Um, I'm just going to have to deal with the fact that it's going to fog up over time um, and maybe just keep keep wiping it off every now and then um, and keeping an eye on it really, which isn't great, but it will, it will do. Uh, so the plan tonight is the same as uh, same as yesterday really. Uh, I've got a couple of scopes. Uh, one's trained on, uh, well actually both of them are trained on uh, Orion at the moment. And once uh, my red cat has sort of moved into a little bit of the trees, I'm going to then slew it over to uh, Pleiades, uh, get a bit more data on that. And then once it's cleared the tree again, I'm going to go back to uh, Orion potentially. And um, yeah, same with the um, this other scope here. Um, that's currently all the plan is to get some Oxygen 3 data for Orion. Uh, to do a nice narrowband image of Orion as well. So I've got broadband on one scope and narrowband on the other. So let's just take a quick look at what we're imaging with that scope. Um, so I've got the ASI Air Plus running on that rig, um, imaging the Orion Nebula, and you can see, yep, the 300 second subs are coming through with a fair amount of detail on here. Uh, interesting guiding seems to be a bit all over the place, which is a bit strange. Um, haven't got anything snagging or anything like that, so not sure what's causing that. I've noticed that um, when you kind of are doing dithering, occasionally it jumps around, but yeah, this should be fine, which is a bit concerning. Normally I don't have any problems at all, but also you can just check by um, zooming into the stars and they, they look pretty good. Don't seem to have any star trails on here, so uh, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's nothing. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so to um, a few people and just sort of chatting about guiding is as long as your, your guiding graph might not be perfect you might not be getting sub arc second guiding but at the end of the day um, as long as your stars are sharp and they don't look bloated or elongated then does it really matter um, I'm no expert but I don't think it really does um, it's best to not get too hung up on that and that's definitely what people have told me in the past as well and it's dropping back down again now So you might be thinking, what on earth is going on here? So uh, basically had a few problems with uh, dew heaters uh, whilst doing this imaging session. Um, one of them on the, the main scope didn't come on properly, so I had to uh, quickly uh, demiss the uh, the front element. So I thought, why not use a hairdryer? Um, quickest way. Um, so that worked a treat and then also uh, worked on the guide scope as well. So uh, yeah, if you ever get stuck, then uh, just borrow a hairdryer and um or we'll use your own and uh yeah works a treat so because of where these targets were um the meridian flip was actually fairly early on in the evening uh, so i basically watched um watched that sort of go through automatically just checking that the cables were all okay um and then went to sleep and woke up the following day uh took a bunch of flats uh calibrated and stacked all of the images and this is what i found 